I have a new power bank I want to share with you today. This is the Pectron E600 LFP. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this power bank, keep watching. Before we get started, I want to thank Pectron for sending me the E600 LFP so that I could share it with you. As always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the physical and performance specifications as well as the operation for this power bank, and then I'll share my thoughts with you. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Pectron E600 LFP, I thought I'd share with you what came with it. So let's put the power bank aside. So I was surprised and quite pleased to see that Pectron included a nice zippered hard-sided case for the storage of all the cables and other accessories that you're likely to use with this power bank. Not only is it a nice place to keep everything organized and together, but it also provides a little bit of extra room should you add a one want to add a few extra things. Inside, of course, the ever-present and, and required manual and warranty information. There is an AC charging unit, comes in two pieces. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. There is a DC vehicle charging cable, also a benefit, of course. There is a MC4 solar charging cable. So should you decide you want to add solar to capacity to this, you can do so using either this cable or the Anderson power pole cable, all provided. Nice to have all those cables provided at the same time. Or let me just organize and push all this to the side and bring the unit back in so that you can get a closer look at it. Now we'll go over a few of the key features before we get into its specification. So right off the top, one of the things about this is that it has a significant amount of battery capacity at 614 watt hours. Pretty good for its size, actually very good for the size of this unit. And what's really nice about this, it has a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. So again, for the size of this, that's a lot of output, 1200 watts pure sine wave. That's great. But it can power up to 2000 watt uh, power or it can output up to 2000 watts. I didn't get it that high, but I did try a few devices that would take a lot of power and this would register well up close to 2000 watt. Now, what's also nice is that this can take an accept of 400 watts of solar input, which is significant. Now, I only have a 200 watt panel, so I couldn't max that out. But if you have two 200 watt panels or any combination to get up to 400 watts, then you can do that. And that leads to a very, very rapid charging time of 2.2 two hours. I think that's quite good. And of course, this has the better batteries, the LifePo4 or lithium iron phosphate batteries, which have a rated number of life cycles of 3,500 before they drop down to 80%. Now, it's also rated as being a very quiet generator at 50 dBs, and that's information provided by the company. Of course, I don't have any means of, of checking that, but I'll talk more to that in a few minutes' time. All right, quickly, I'm going to go through the physical specifications as well as the performance specifications, and all the information I'll be giving you now will be in the video description below for your reference. So right off the top, the weight. Of course, that's one of the things we want to know about a battery of this size. And I think it comes in at a very reasonable 20 pounds or 9.4 kilograms, especially given the size, capacity, and performance of this unit. Now let's go through the dimensions. So it is 11.7 inches or 298 millimeters in this dimension. It is 7.8 inches or 199 millimeters front to back. And from table to the top, it is 8.5 inches or 215 millimeters. As already mentioned, the battery is a LifePo 4 or lithium iron phosphate battery with a 614 watt hour capacity rated at 3,500 recycle or recharge cycles before it drops down to 80% of its original capacity. All right, we focused in closer on the unit so that I can show you all the input and output ports while we go through the performance specifications a little bit more in depth. So over here, you can see the two input ports, the primary input port down below where you use not only the AC charging unit, but either the MC4 or Anderson power pole connected to your solar panels, again, to a maximum of 400 watts here. And just above it, you have the DC charging port, port primarily intended for the 12 volt 
car charging unit through here. Now, as far, far as output ports go, we have three grounded AC output ports at 120 volts uh, each unit to a maximum power of 1200 watts. And of course, I've mentioned earlier that you have a surge capacity or peak power of 2000 watts with this unit. Over on this side are the DC outputs at the top, the traditional used to be called cigarette lighter, uh, cigarette lighter port. Now just called it a DC optional power port for vehicles plus two 55, 21 barrel, bolt, or barrel ports here for DC output. Down below you have two uh, USB type A outputs, each rated at 18 watts, and you have two USB type C outputs, one rated at 18 watts and the other rated at 100 watts. Now also on top is an AC charging unit. Let's see if I can show you that by moving this over or sorry, wireless charging unit on top if you happen to have a phone or other device that can make use of that. And I'm just gonna put my wedge back in to keep this tilted up so that you can see what's happening here. So here are the uh, on and off. So I do have the unit turned on right now. This may be one of the disappointments for this unit. It is not an especially bright display. It's a simple gray on black. There's no color to it. All the information you want is there, but it's not especially bright, but you can see it. I don't know that I can make it any easier for you to see. Maybe when I plug in the AC charging unit, which I will do in a moment. So you have a, an AC on here and a DC on here. It's a long press to turn the AC on just to prevent an accidental uh, turn on, uh, but just a short press for the other. Now I am going to plug in the AC charging unit and it is an external brick and you'll see here or you'll see the power starting to go up but you'll also hear the fan current turning on that's what I part of what I want to do here now I guess it did brighten up the display significantly hopefully that's showing up it appears to be on the screen showing up so you you'll see the input and the outputs are done differently the input or battery status is done by a progressive set of bars on a battery icon here. You can see I'm currently have about 49% left in my battery. There, I, that's what I wanted you to hear. Hopefully you can hear that. The AC power unit fans just turn on. Intended to keep, of course, the unit uh, from overheating, but they do have uh, it's not it's not a terrible amount of noise but it is a little bit noisier than some of the other units so maybe for being a budget unit part of what you're giving up is the fact that there's no in internal ac to dc inverter it's on the outside like this so does reduce bulk and weight for the unit but does add in the complication and i think a little bit more sound than a lot of other units will produce when it's plugged in like this but all right, so let me unplug that just to cancel the sound out. There we go, and it turns off very quickly. All right, so that's the inputs and outputs for this unit. Now, what I would like to do is wrap up by giving you some of my thoughts about it. All right, let's go over a few of the pros and cons and my thoughts in using this battery for some time now. So what do I really like about this battery? Well, I think I've mentioned before, it is relatively lightweight given its size and power capacity, uh, both in the terms of its storage and its output. Uh, part of that weight saving, of course, is the fact that the AC charging unit is external to the device, and that does reduce the bulk and weight to a certain degree, but you just have to remember that it is as something that you do have to take with you if you're going to be charging this using AC current. Now, one of the other things I like about it is a bit of an aesthetic, but it does have a functional purpose as well. And that are the corners, the orange hard rubber corners on all eight corners. Um, not only does it just look fairly nice, I find that they are functional in the sense that they do give it a little bit of extra protection against bangs and bumps. I wouldn't drop this on the ground and expect it to function properly afterwards. 
but should things bump into it or if you wanted to store this on top of something else but have a little bit of a gap those corners would give you that protection as well now a few of the other things i like about this unit is the fact that it provides all those cables with it i mentioned that in the beginning that it's an excellent storage case beyond what i see in most of the batteries that i've been uh, given to test so far but also having both the anderson power pole and the mc4 connectors as well as the 12 volt dc input is uh, i think that's quite a nice accessory to be given with this battery Okay, it does have a few downsides, and I'll mention that right off of the top. This unit will not accept dual inputs for charging, so you cannot hook it up to uh, your solar panels and your AC power unit to get an extra rapid charging time. You can't hook it up to a USB type C input like some of the other units have. It's just a single input, one or the other. You can't do both at the same time. That's a bit of a miss on this, considering that that seems to be pretty much a standard practice to get maximum rapid charging for your battery is to be able to do dual input so uh, again remember this is a budget battery so you are giving up some of the nice extras that come with some of the other batteries which is kind of funny considering this does have a wireless charging unit on top i think that's something uh, i could do without and prefer to have the dual input charging for it. It does have pass-through charging, which is nice, which means that you can power up other units off of this while it's being charged. I think that's great, especially if you're doing something like I'm likely to use this for, which is for a 12 volt refrigerator while car camping, which means that I can hook up my solar panel to keep this topped up while I'm using it to run the refrigerator with it. Something else that is a bit of a miss on this, and this is more for home use than anything else. However, I think it can be valuable if you're using this car camping, and that is it does not have a UPS function, which means, of course, that you can't pass AC current through this to your device and expect the moment that there's a power failure for the device to kick in. Now you can do of course the pass through charging but that's a little bit different than having it run as a UPS unit. So in fact what's happening is you're doing charging and discharging at the same time which will eventually shorten the overall lifespan of the battery. So a bit of a miss that's available on higher priced units just not available on this. Okay I've given you quite a bit of information. What I'll tell you is I find that this is been a very stable dependable battery i've played with it around the home powering up a number of devices and it's worked every time so i haven't had any complaints i guess the one other complaint is in the display you cannot see uh, input and output when dc is being used it's just a bit of a mess so um, you do see the battery charging you just don't see the rate at which it is being charged you can't tell how many watts are coming in or how many watts are going out at the same time again a bit of a this. Otherwise, the display has all the information you're likely to want. Um, it could be a bit better. Let's say that. Okay, um, all the information I've given you will be in the video description as well as the links to where you can take a closer look at, the, at this unit. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.